Let's continue our discussion of the hyperbolic sine. In the last video, we actually derived a formula for the inverse hyperbolic sine, and we also derived a formula for its uh, derivative. So in this particular case, we got one over the square root of y squared plus one. Now we can be a little bit more flexible and change variables uh, that will fit whatever type of problem we're doing. So let's suppose that we have u to be a differentiable function of x. Now we can extend this formula by the chain rule. So we'd have the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sine of u will now be u prime divided by the square root of u squared plus one. Now, of course, just like we've done many times before, we can take the inverse process and convert this derivative formula into an antiderivative formula. So this will give us the antiderivative or the integral of du over the square root of u squared plus one is equal to the inverse hyperbolic sine of u plus c. Now, when we're doing definite integrals and we're doing an engineering problem, or even math or physics problem, it's nice to have the logarithmic equivalent of the inverse, inverse hyperbolic sine. So it's usually preferred to write it this way. So we'll just go ahead and substitute for this the natural log of u plus the square root of u squared plus one uh, plus an arbitrary constant since we've already derived that. So now that's a nice integral formula, but it's not as good as it can be. Anytime we have formulas with these Pythagorean square roots, we like to extend them. And you'll see these uh, written up in integral tables. So let's fix an a positive and now replace u with u divided by a. So we're just gonna take this formula and replace u with u divided by a. So now the differential instead of du will be one over a du. And then of course we replace uh, u uh, downstairs here with u over a giving us a u squared over a squared plus a one. Now, of course, we factor the one over a, and then we get a common denominator, and then we flip the a upstairs, and of course the a's absorb, and now we have an integral that looks like this. That is the integral of du over the square root of u squared plus a squared, and we'll do likewise here. We'll go ahead and replace u with u over a, so we have u over a plus the square root of u squared over a squared plus one, and I'm gonna write my constant as c1 this time. And now, of course, when you get a common denominator here, again, remember, we've got the square root of a squared, which is the absolute value of a, but that's just plain old a since a is positive. So now we get the natural log of u plus the square root of u squared plus a squared divided by a. Now, what we can do is apply the uh, quotient rule for logarithms. So this will be the natural log of u plus the square root of u squared plus a squared minus the natural log of a plus c1. And now, of course, we want to make our formulas look nice, so we're going to set c to be this term, this constant, the negative logarithm of a plus c1. So now we have a new integral formula. So these inverse hyperbolic functions give us nice integral formulas. So we have the integral of du over the square root of u squared plus a squared is now the natural log of u plus the square root of u squared plus a squared plus an arbitrary constant. And we'll have opportunities to actually use these in problems, but what we're trying to do is set the stage for more work in, in integration that you'll see in calculus two. And we are done.